Bonjour everybody and welcome back to my studio. So today I am taking you through the making of this painting. Uh, there is a lot to it. The colours with that type of dog we are quite lucky because there is a lot of complementary coming up. So let's go! I use a watercolour paper 300 GSM. I cut it the size I need, making sure it fits the mount that I'm planning on putting my artwork in. And I use the offcut as my palette so I can see exactly how my paint will react on my final piece. A lot of people use palettes that are plastic or something like that and you can't really see how the paint is going to actually react. Sometimes it's not wet enough or it's too wet. So I would always advise to use the paper that, or a piece of canvas that you are actually using for the final piece. It always starts with my clients uh, supplying me some pictures. So I use usually one main pictures and when they send me more, I use the others as references. I start with the pencil drawings. I try to keep it very light. Sometimes if I go a bit too dark, I just remove it. I chose a brush that will give some full stroke. Usually with, with dogs who have a lot of hair, I use a different type of brush that actually create the hair according to my brush draw. But here I decided to work it more like a watercolor style. And the reason is, is because uh, Doberman, they don't have long hair. There is very little that actually will you know, kind of flick off. If you know my painting, you know that I have hair everywhere. But with Doberman, I have to work it slightly differently. So it's more like a watercolor style. Here, I decided to start with the lighter shade. I don't always do, but um, I would advise to do so. This is a rule, so now <laughs> in painting, there are many rules and one of them is that you have the right to break them. So do your own test, do your own thing. And yes, there is sometimes a lot of things that don't work, but it always teaches you something. This is what I love about painting. You are learning all the time. So what's happening with animals that have a black coat? When it's shiny, it actually gets a reflection from the sky if they are outside obviously so the reflection becomes blue so we start having a very very light blue and I will start with that so I start with the light blue the idea is like in my mind I know it will create a shiny coat when it is contrasting with the rest I am going then slightly darker in, in the, um, the area that I don't have as much light on so I get my darker blue by adding a bit of red in that create what I call a dirty blue and I actually really like that color I think it gives a certain depth to the painting and mostly with what happened later on I'll show you so in the area that have more shadows I put that dirty blue and I, I darken it up and build it up on the painting little by little I now go on with blue gray it's like a black but it, there is always colors in the black. Black is never fully black in nature, only because you have reflections and you have a lot going on. So black is never really black. And so here I use, uh, I'm going for the lighter shade. So it's more like a gray, but it's a blue gray. That gray has got the blue that I used as well before. So it's, I, I have my mix here and I will build up the black area and playing with the values. The beauty of Doberman for a painter is they had this orangey pattern and it is the complementary of the blue and the dirty blue that I have been using before. So it will give some wow factors to the painting. Every time you use a complementary, there is something going on in the human eye and it makes a painting particularly attractive just with the colors. The work on the eyes is extremely important to me um, because I think that this is the way you communicate not only with people but with your pet. You know, you absolutely love when they look at you in the eyes, isn't it? There is a sort of 
connection that is happening there. So um, I do pay attention to the eyes and very often they're actually the focus of my paintings. This is why I do a lot of portrait. The work on the eyes is extremely important. We have a dark shadow under the top lid and a light shadow at the base of the eyes and there is always a strong light reflection. So all of this together will give the illusion of water, that the eyes is actually wet and it will give a lot of depth to the eyes and it will create the roundness of the eyes as well with the shadow at the top and at the base. So that's some things to keep in mind. I usually finish my artwork flat if I want to add a few layers with more water content to avoid them running down. Here I am darkening a few areas. This always makes the lighter areas stand out. I use a black gel pen just to highlight a few bits, mainly hair. I use a white gel pen for the hair or the details in the dark areas. If you see here, the white hair on the corner of the mouth is creating depth and separating the neck, keeping it in the background and the mouth, keeping the smile in the foreground. Now I have the back and the mount ready, so it's time to mount the artwork. So the piece is lightly fixed to the mount, it's a removable tape and then the mount is attached to the back without touching the artwork so uh, even though many of my clients keep the mount for their final framing if you wanted to remove it it is easy to do without damaging the artwork and there you go i hope you like it and feel free to contact me with your art project i would be delighted to look at it for you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, it helps a lot. Uh, my future plan are to be able to uh, do live painting on YouTube. I will be able to uh, do so when I reach a thousand subscribers, so don't hesitate to share and tell your friends and family as well. My next video is going to be this one here. I'm not sure you can see, but uh, I have drawn our little duckling. So. Um, we had so many baby ducklings uh, and they are absolutely lovely so I thought I will make a fun little painting and I wish you a lovely day. You're gonna help me then? You're my little assistant.